In this video, we'll be looking in depth at Pflugerville, Texas. I'll give you a general overview, some key notable points, some things I like about it, some things I don't like about it, things to do there, and so much more. So if that is the reason why you clicked on this video, stay tuned. Hello again, everybody. If this is your first time to the channel, my name is Frank and I'm part of a team at the award-winning J.B. Goodwin Brokerage right here in the exquisite Austin, Texas. Each and every week, we put out tons of new content all in regards to living in Austin, Texas, whether it be the pros and cons, vlog tours of certain areas and suburbs, comparisons of certain cities and states, and so much more like this one. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing to this channel and ringing the little bell so that you're notified each and every time we put out a new video. Ever since we gave birth to this channel, we've had a lot of fun and we've put quite a lot of work into it. So it's been very cool to see all the reach outs we've been getting all the time from people just like you who are needing to relocate to Austin, Texas. We love finding that perfect fit for them, getting to know their lifestyle and making that move as smooth as possible. So whether you're nine days away or 90 days away or however long away from needing to move here, go ahead and reach out to us, whether you email us, whether you text us, whether you give us a call, any time of day, any day of the week. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at the general overview of Pflugerville. And for starters, let's address the name. In our experience and in my own experience when I was much younger, the name just confused the hell out of me. I didn't know if it was Pflugerville, if you know the F was silent, or if it was Fluegerville or Flogerville, because you know there's different EAU combinations with names and spellings and things of that nature. Well, the truth of the matter is that it was named after Henry Fluger, who immigrated here from Germany in I believe 1849. You might have to fact check me. I do not claim to be a historian. From there, the legend says his descendants eventually populated Fluegerville and it grew and grew and grew into what it is today, which is standing at around 61,000 residents, averaging between, I wanna say 85 and 90,000 a year of average income. The location in relation to Austin is something that is a little bit interesting to me. So Pflugerville itself is northeast of Austin, but Pflugerville is deceivingly large. So on the map, it might look like a little dot in the grand scheme of things in the greater Austin area, but really in person, it feels so much bigger. So much so that you can live in Pflugerville and be either 15 minutes away from the downtown metro area, or you can live in Pflugerville and be as far as 30 or 35 minutes away from the downtown metro area. And on that note, I will address the growth that Pflugerville has experienced, especially in the last 10 to 20 years. And one of the reasons why is because it is so close to Austin. It is something that Pflugerville, to its credit, has over a lot of the other suburbs of Austin, such as Cedar Park, such as Leander, Liberty Hill, Georgetown, Round Rock. All of those places are close enough to Austin, but Pflugerville is the closest to Austin. None of those places are gonna let you get to downtown within 15 minutes. It's just, it's too big for that. So when it comes to the world of suburbia, Pflugerville, has that edge where, you know, why do we live in suburbia? To be safe, for good schools, to have a nice, peaceful, quiet life, but that's always going to be within close enough distance to downtown. And that's very much my personality anyway. I like to have access to downtown. I like to go whenever I feel like it, but I don't like to be stuck in the thick of it. I spent some time in California a few years back and I used to think I was a city boy and that absolutely ruined my taste for the city. Granted, they're different beasts, Austin and LA, but um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm scarred. So I like my peace, I like my tranquility, but I like to be close enough. And that's something that Pflugerville has to offer, as I said, better than any other suburb in the greater Austin area. Now, is that the only reason people move to Pflugerville? Absolutely not, but it is one of the bigger reasons. Another reason why people move to Pflugerville, especially recently, is because of its proximity to a lot of these different tech jobs that are now popping up everywhere in the greater Austin area, specifically North Austin. A downside to Pflugerville is that it really doesn't have any major employers to 
offer within its own city limits. But within driving distance are companies like Amazon, companies like Tesla, companies like Samsung, and so on. So if you're living in the Cedar Parks of the world, the Leanders of the world, the Round Rocks of the world, or the Georgetowns of the world, it's still reasonable distance. Yes, your commute is not going to be a headache, but if you live in Pflugerville, it really is the suburban equivalent of being a hop and a skip away. Now, there is a misconception I'd like to address real quickly, and it is another reason why people might not always move to Pflugerville, but why it's always on their radars, and that is the misconception that Pflugerville is just astronomically cheaper than the rest of Austin, whether we're talking downtown or the neighboring suburbs. And I'm here to dismiss that rumor, to bust that myth, and to tell it like it really is. Yes, it is true, Pflugerville is cheaper overall than the downtown area, of course, because that place is getting very expensive these days, but not by much. And I think it is because of Pflugerville's reputation. Over the past decade, or past two decades, Pflugerville was maintaining the reputation of a place that is great to live, safe to live, good enough schools, close enough to the city at such a bargain of a price, at such a bang for your buck price. And that was true up until just a few years ago, in my opinion. I mean, just a few years ago in real estate, I mean, I knew the averages and everything, and a lot of it was in the mid to 200s, even in the low 300s. Well, today, the median price is going to be right around $400,000, also at around $180 per square foot. Zillow claims it's 350, Realtor.com claims it's around 450, but in my experience, it's honestly right in the middle. So to keep it real with you guys, as I often do, it is true you can still find a good deal in Pflugerville, some bang for your buck. But nowadays, in, in this current market, yes, it is very possible to get a home. People close every single day, but it is getting more difficult. So your focus needs to shift away from getting a deal, getting a bargain, getting a steal, to simply getting your foot in the door and getting your offer accepted. It's about getting in, not getting a deal, at least for the time being. Another reason why it has a reputation is because Pflugerville is older, at least in the grand scheme of things when being compared to the other suburbs of Austin. For example, Cedar Park had its peak, I'd say between 2000 and maybe 2010, or 2005 to maybe 2015, and it peaked and it dipped, and now it's very much established. Whereas, say, Leander right now is absolutely exploding. Now it's Leander's turn to have its own peak. So we're seeing a ton of new builds, they're planning a shopping center, they're planning a lagoon, and it's really going to put Leander on the map. Round Rock, <laughs> interestingly enough, always seems to be in this perpetual state of a peak. It's like, <laughs> there's always new land in Round Rock. Somehow you would think that they built all they could there, but no, they're still building. It has its own downtown. It has a, a resort now called Kalahari, the largest indoor water park. And so when it comes to Pflugerville, its time was in the past. Um, there are still new builds and it still is growing, don't get me wrong. But a lot of the homes you'll find in Pflugerville could be built in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. And because of that, it is going to be more affordable and certain parts of Pflugerville are going to have really good tax rates and some parts of Pflugerville, unfortunately, nowadays are going to have really high tax rates. But I'll get into that just a little bit later. Something else I'll add about Pflugerville, especially if you are considering the different suburbs, if you're doing your homework, if you're trying to find the right place for you, Something I'll say about Pflugerville that you might not read as much about or see online or you know, things of that nature is the fact that, at least in my subjective opinion, it is more rural than the other suburbs. So in Cedar Park, for example, it's mainly just residential. There's a nice shopping center. It is considerably smaller, similar to Leander as well, and especially Round Rock. I mean, Round Rock has really really developed and to my opinion basically a city outside of the city if that makes sense it's like its own world uh, removed from austin whereas pflugerville being in pflugerville yes there are shopping centers yes there are things to do i'm not trying to say that it's just land but, but it is going to have more of a country feel more green than the other suburbs and the reason i say that's objective is because obviously you might like that or you might not. For example, just within the past couple of months, there was a sale in Pflugerville that went for, I believe, about $1.5 million, which to me boggles my mind because Pflugerville does have its luxury options, but I haven't heard the number 1.5 out of Pflugerville in quite some time. So I go online to check it out in the MLS and I see 
wow, well, I mean, what is this? You know, right under my nose, do I not know if I'm trying to keep up to date, you know, market data and just being in the loop of things. And it's, it was a two or three bedroom house with a couple of bathrooms, old, nothing big, right? But it was sitting on 35 acres of land. And so that goes to show you, I mean, <laughs> you could build commercial shopping centers there, just different things to do, but someone owns that and they just sold it. So it goes to tell you that it, it is, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't want to say farm E or ranch E, but it certainly has more of that feel than the other suburbs is, is what I'm trying to articulate. Now in a favorable light on a positive note, what does that mean for Pflugerville? Well, an abundance of parks, an abundance of master planned communities that have humongous golf courses and resort style pools, which ultimately make it the true essence of what being a suburb is really all about while maintaining, as I said, close enough proximity to the other world that is downtown Austin. But don't get me wrong, as I mentioned as well, there are still things to do in Pflugerville. For starters, I'll mention Typhoon Texas, which is Pflugerville's very own water park. Now, is it going to be Schlitterbahn? No. Is it going to be SeaWorld? No. Is it going to be Six Flags or any of these places that have water parks? Absolutely not. It is relatively small and it is right in the middle of Pflugerville. And we did a vlog a little while back of Pflugerville and we went to the water park. And in the spirit of total transparency and honesty, I wasn't blown away by it. Um, <laughs> I, I probably was a little bit too hard on it because we went during the off season when it wasn't up and running and booming with people. So it looked, I don't know, it, lo it was a bit of a, of a sad image, right? It looked rustic and worn down. I don't think they, they just prettied it up the way they'd like to before a grand reopening. So I, I wasn't all too impressed, but the fact of the matter is if you live in Pflugerville, you'll have a water park. That's the main takeaway. It beats not having a water park. In that vlog, however, I will also mention and admit even though we are quite familiar with Pflugerville, the area of Pflugerville we were touring just wasn't all that exciting. And yes, I realize it's a suburb, it's not meant to be exciting, but we found ourselves continually just like, what else can we show? What else can we do all within a reasonable driving distance? Because yes, Pflugerville is quite large. And we, we gave off the impression that Pflugerville was just kind of boring. And at the end of the day, is it boring? That is entirely up to you. In my opinion, in hindsight, I was a little too hard on it. It, it is a great place to live and there are things to do. Um, but I bring this up because if you're coming from a place anywhere in the country, where you're used to having all types of bars or clubs or museums or, or different places of culture or art, you're gonna get that in downtown Austin, but you're not going to get that in Pflugerville. Another great thing to do in Pflugerville, which again is outdoors, would be Lake Pflugerville. It's a man-made lake, it's fairly large, and it has a playscape for the kids. I've seen people fishing there, you can paddleboard, you could canoe. And so you're not having to go to Austin to experience Lake Austin. You're not having to go to the hills and experience Lake Travis. You're not having to drive all the way up to Georgetown to experience Lake Georgetown. You have your very own Lake Pflugerville in Pflugerville. So we are seeing a common theme here of things to do that are primarily outdoors. Another thing I'll mention about Pflugerville is that while it does have its small businesses, its mom and pop shops, and yes, some bars and things of that nature, not to a grand extent, but locally owned, things like that that the community really supports, you're not going to find it in excess. Much of Pflugerville, in my own experience, in my own opinion, is very much big box, right? So they'll have a Costco, they'll have humongous shopping centers with your big name restaurants and stores, you know, you're gonna have your Target, you're, you're gonna have your Chipotle and just things of that nature. And you might find a nice eatery, you might find a nice boutique shop, I'm not saying you won't. But it, it'll be pretty far and few, you know, Pflugerville is at the end of the day, not to be redundant, suburbia. You won't be starved for the smaller things because yes, there is a little bit of a combination of the two. Um, 
it's just not very balanced. Now, before moving on to more things you should know about Pflugerville, things I like about Pflugerville or dislike about Pflugerville, why don't you drop a comment down below if you either agree with me, if you disagree with me, if you have any questions for us. We'd love to get involved with you guys. And in addition, consider liking this video as well as it really helps our channel grow, tells us that we're doing a great job. And in addition to that, if you've got parents, if you've got children, if you've got friends, anyone in your life who you know is considering a move to Austin, Texas, go ahead and share our content with them and spread the good word. All right, now something I think is very important to mention about not only Pflugerville, not only Austin, but Texas itself. If you're coming from out of state, this is especially for you, you are going to want to have a car. And in suburbia, that's kind of a given, but I will explain even further why. In the state of Texas, with it being so incredibly large, point A to point B, on average is not going to be your typical point A to point B in say California, New York, Oregon, so on and so forth. Things here for better and worse are very spread out. Personally, I like it. It, it creates a more calm atmosphere. It's just part of being in the South. You know, it's very opposite what I experienced, for example, in Los Angeles where everything was smushed together, walking distance, yes, but so densely populated and noisy and busy and it's just, it just felt like static, right? You know, those old TVs with the tubes in the back, you turn it on, it's just fuzz. That's how it felt to live in a place like that. Whereas Texas, Austin, and Pflugerville, <laughs> to get extra specific, is the opposite. It's just spread out, everything's bigger. Instead of building up, they build wide. Everything is just nice and relatively new. And, and so, but the downside to that <laughs> is the fact that it could take you 10 or 15 minutes to get from point A to point B. Hopefully not, but you're certainly not going to be walking unless you absolutely love to walk. Now, obviously, if you live in the downtown Austin area, yes, there's incredible walkability, but something that Austin is just a little behind the times with is their public transportation. In my opinion, it does leave a little bit to be desired. I don't mean to keep being negative, but on this channel, if you've watched any of our videos, I keep it brutally honest. You know, moving is such a significant moment in your life. It's such an important decision. A lot of stress goes into it. You don't need someone BSing you <laughs> with how perfect everything is. I'm telling it how I see it. Um, and yeah, our public transportation system just, it's not that great. And thankfully in the past decade, we've gotten something called the Metro Rail, which is pretty cool. It gets you from downtown to North Austin to Cedar Park to Leander. You can chill, you can do your work on it. It's not that expensive. So that is a good way of public transportation, but it's not going to be like San Francisco. It's certainly not going to be like New York or even Houston for that matter that has a good infrastructure around the metropolis. Austin, first and foremost, was a college town once upon a time that grew way too quickly and has been just trying to keep up and catch up ever since. So transportation is one of the casualties constant traffic and construction are, is one of the casualties as well. And where Pflugerville ties into this is the Metro Rail that I mentioned doesn't even go to Pflugerville. As I mentioned, it goes from downtown to North Austin to Cedar Park to Leander, but it does not go Northeast towards Pflugerville. So yeah, you could be living in Cedar Park or North Austin or Leander and commuting to the tech area or the downtown area and not have to drive and take that Metro Rail. But living in Pflugerville, you are, SOL, you know, you're just simply out of luck. Now to keep it positive, something I like about Pflugerville are the schools. And in Texas, there is a certain standard with the public school systems. A lot of times, if they're in a nice enough area, they can be very well compared to private schools without the uniforms. And Pflugerville is no different. Pflugerville is a very respected school district within the greater Austin area. And to keep it real with you, <clears throat> I don't think it is quite on par with the Round Rock Independent School District and the Leander Independent School District. In my opinion, as far as large districts, because you could also mention Eanes, but that's a little smaller, more exclusive. <clears throat> as large districts go, Leander and Round Rock are the cream of the crop. And in my opinion, yes, Pflugerville is comparable it's right up there i believe on niche.com it has a a minus whereas the others have either an a or an a plus so it's you know splitting hairs 
But yeah, when you're making that decision and you're moving and you're thinking about where your kids are going to school, you do split the hairs. And Pflugerville, bottom line, great school district, large school district, but not quite the best school district, at least in my opinion. And you know, I'm sure Google will echo most of what I'm saying. Now, to be fair, in defense of Pflugerville, they have some great schools, you know what I mean? So they're not so good schools are not gonna be so good, but their great schools are going to be really great, if, if you get what I'm saying. It's kind of two extremes. And Pflugerville is big enough, as opposed to Cedar Park or Leander, where it has areas where the schools are great and it has areas where they aren't. So for example, in Northeast Pflugerville, it is newer, it is nicer, it is more secluded. There are great master plan communities there. So the schools you'll find in that area of Pflugerville are going to be nicer. Um, the downside again, just keeping it all fair, is that you are in Northeast Pflugerville, which means if you do your business in downtown or you like to spend your time downtown, that's where you're going to be about 30 or 35 minutes away, as opposed to say Southwest Pflugerville, which is going to be about 15 minutes away. And in Southwest Pflugerville, that's where you have the schools where on these websites, niche.com for example, they won't have as high grades or scores, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not going to be their favorable schools. And a lot of it does have to do with the pricing, which I'm about to get to. On the subject of Northeast versus Southwest, the two ends of the Pflugerville spectrum, that is where you're going to see your biggest difference in the tax rates. And if you've ever watched our content, it's hopefully stuck in your subconscious mind that I will always address the property taxes because I like to be as transparent as I possibly can. <sighs> okay, so in Austin, you are looking at on average around two and a half percent. If you really go into certain areas downtown, you might find 2.2, 2.3%, um, but two and a half is going to be probably your, your median. And Pflugerville has very high and very low, at least in the realm of Austin. So if you are coming from a place that has a property tax rate of 1%, 1.5%, just out of the gate, I'm telling you now, even the cheapest part in Pflugerville is going to be much more than that, right? So the lowest you can get in Pflugerville is going to be that Southwest area. And that is going to be around 2.2 or 2.3% on average. However, when you're getting to the Northeast end of Pflugerville, the nicer, newer, more desirable part of Pflugerville, that's where you're looking at a tax rate that is going to be closer to 3%. I've seen it as high as 3.1%, especially in those new builds where there's a brand new school, brand new shopping center, brand new gas station, brand new golf course, everything is new and in development. That's where it's really going to get expensive. And yeah, I mean, if you have a house that is $350,000, which is a conservative number in today's market, even in Pflugerville, you could be paying $12,000 a year just on those property taxes. Even if you're in the southwest region of Pflugerville, and let's say you get one for two and a half percent, they'll still be paying $9,000 a year on those taxes. Now, thankfully, in the state of Texas, you can once every year refute it and protest it and, and try to get it fixed and say, hey, it's not accurate, you know, because they're going to appraise the area. Your tax rate could change year to year. It's something I've had experience with where you just pay and you end up paying more and more and more. It's not necessarily locked in. So yes, um, <laughs> it's bad, but the good news is you do get to protest it, but you shouldn't have to. And that's my point. That's, that's the real stickler with those property taxes here. It is the other side of the coin that is no state income tax. It's very true. We have no state income tax here in Texas, brings a lot of companies here especially and a lot of families here to save money, but none of them are really expecting or accounting for how much they're actually going to be paying a year on the property taxes. So on this channel, as boring of a subject as it is, I like to get it out there, educate you, inform you, not to deter you, not to intimidate you, um, but to simply help you be aware uh, before you make such a big decision. Now, a pro within that con is certainly the bang for your buck that you get here in Texas, here in Austin, especially there in Pflugerville. Half a million dollars in Pflugerville gets you so much more than it would say in Portland or in California or the Bay Area, Manhattan, you know, it's it goes a much further way here. And even though Pflugerville just as of a few years ago was 
dirt cheap was just so much more affordable. Even in today's market, all of that considered, you still get more bang for your buck. It is simply a default of living in the state of Texas. Now let's say you are looking at Pflugerville because you heard of its reputation, because you heard of its affordability in recent years, because you heard of the schools and so on, but you're more of a first time buyer. You know, you're looking to either start a family or you have a little one or something of that nature where you're not necessarily looking to buy big, but you're looking to get into the suburbs of Austin, Texas. Fear or not, you know, I have talked a lot about how it's gotten more expensive and I have mentioned how there are an abundance of master plan communities. The main ones that come to mind would be Falcon Point, Black Hawk, Sorrento. But if you are looking for something that is in the 200s and the 300s, that still does happen. That is not entirely unheard of. Yes, it's going to be smaller and maybe you won't have this upgrade, this option, that upgrade, because that's how you really stack on the price. But in the past couple of months, I mean, there was a new build that went for 250 or 260. It was just direct from the builder to the client. I'm sure the realtor found them the house off market before it hit the MLS and there were bidding wars and things of that nature. But there are ways, you know, if you have the right people working with you and you, you have an idea of what you want, you can get something very affordable in Pflugerville. You know, those days, are dwindling, um, but they're not gone. And on that note, in our experience, a lot of people we've helped get into Pflugerville have actually been investors. So if you are an investor watching this video, I am momentarily talking to you. The schools are good enough. There is enough new development. It is close enough, as I said, to Austin, Texas, that it is a great opportunity to have an investment property. And another reason why is the way Austin's going right now, suburbs included, if you get something that's 250 right now, or even 350 or 370, take it, do it, and do it now. Because in a year, in two years, I mean, I don't have a crystal ball, but it doesn't take the biggest expert to know that those prices at the rate Austin's going, the number one relocation destination in the country, by the way, those prices are just not gonna stay as they are. So if you are looking to buy a place and rent it out, and you're looking in 250, 300, 350, under 400 you can still find that and in my opinion it would be a pretty safe bet and a smart decision so whether you're an investor whether you are a first-time buyer or you just got some equity in california and you're coming here to buy big regardless reach out we'll take care of you we'll find you the perfect house another thing i've come to really like about pflugerville that i felt the need to mention in this video is its diversity now you can expect in a place like Austin to have tremendous diversity. Everyone's from somewhere. There's a lot of transplants as they call them. So you'll see all types of complexions, different creeds, religions, faiths, walks of life, people who might have my skin color, but they're from Finland or they're from Ireland or they're from Canada. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Austin is a great melting pot. And that is something that Pflugerville has that in my opinion, the other suburbs don't, or at least to the same extent. If we're talking about Georgetown, if we're talking about Cedar Park, if we're talking about Leander, those places are not really going to be melting pots. They aren't really going to be these places rich with culture, with a lot of diversity. They're just not. I'm generalizing, but that, that is what you can expect with them. Pflugerville, interestingly enough, I guess because of its proximity to Austin and how long it's been around, is a beautiful melting pot of different cultures. I mean, is it going to be exactly like Austin? No, it still is a suburb, but it is going to offer more of that than the other suburbs, at least in my opinion. So if you have children and you want to expose them to all different walks of life, to different complexions, to different cultures, so on and so forth, Pflugerville is going to be a better bet. If you yourself are looking for a community, if you're looking for groups, if you're looking for some sort of inclusion or more diversity for you in your own life, I would put Pflugerville atop of the other suburbs on the list. Now, that's not to say that there's nothing else in the greater Austin area that offers diversity. I mean, there are very strong Asian communities, Indian communities, black communities, all throughout the different suburbs. So I'm not trying to say that it's just non-existent, but generally speaking, they will offer far less in comparison to Pflugerville. And I did want to make that point because a lot of the clients we help are from all different walks of life, all different flavors, all different colors of the rainbow. And it's natural to want something like that wherever you're moving to. So 
in my opinion, you can rest easy in Pflugerville. It is a very community-based suburb. There is a lot of local support, a lot of camaraderie, which I don't see necessarily in some of the other suburbs. And it's just one of those things that makes it special, you know, aside from the interesting name. So I've touched on the schools. I've touched on the wide variety of homes and prices and styles you can find in Pflugerville. I've touched on some of the things to do in Pflugerville. I've touched on the growth. I've touched on the pricing. But one thing I'd be remiss if I did not mention about Pflugerville, about Austin, about Texas in general, real quick, is the subject of the weather. <laughs> and so if you are new to the channel, if you are new to considering Austin, I'm just gonna tell you, be, beware, okay? It's, it's, obviously it's hot. I am stating the obvious because in the South, you're going to assume it is hot. But I've just got to tell you, beware between the months of, I'd say end of May through early September. So specifically June, July, and August, you are going to have triple digits. You might be lucky if it's in the 90s, but fully expect triple digits. That is not rare. That is normal here. Also expect it not to be a dry heat. It's not necessarily going to be a very dense, muggy, humid heat like Houston, but it's not going to be like Phoenix or even where I lived in LA or Pasadena. It is the mix of the two. A lot of the times the heat is muggy. A majority of the time it feels like opening an oven. You've got to air out your car. <laughs> ramps up your bills. You know, you pay more for water if you're keeping your grass alive. It ramps up your electric if you're keeping your house cool, which you absolutely will have to do. And so yes, it's hot, but I'm trying to articulate the type of heat. It really just weighs on you, it drains you. And unless you are someone who likes extreme heat, you will be like many of the other Austinites who do their outdoorsy activities in spring and maybe early fall, and they just stay inside during the summertime. Now, where does Pflugerville tie into this? As I mentioned, thankfully, you have things to keep you cool. You have the water park, you have the lake, you have different pools, you have different parks. And so if you are someone who says, heck with the heat, I'm still gonna go out and have fun in the summer, of all the suburbs, I would recommend Pflugerville. Now, when it comes to the rest of the year, I'm talking late September through probably April, that's when it's nice to live in Austin, at least in my opinion. You know, I'm someone who perspires the moment it goes above 75 degrees. I don't know why I, my body's just wired to perspire. <laughs> um, and you wonder why I still live in Austin, but you know, I grew my roots here. It's a wonderful place to live. So I'm here for the time being, you know, but if you're like me, uh, you're going to enjoy the rest of the year much more. It is going to be oftentimes in the 70s, sometimes the 80s, sometimes the 60s, and our winters are going to be really upper 30s through lower 50s. Every seven years, you'll see snow. Every 60 years, you'll see snow storms. <laughs> um, but most of the time, the worst it gets is some sleet, some hazardous driving conditions where they shut down work and school, <laughs> um, which is, I'm laughing because we've helped clients who've come from colder states where it snows six months of the year and they think, oh my God, you guys shut down when there's just a little bit of ice. Yeah, <laughs> we absolutely do. Uh, we're just not prepared. It's not in our bones, it's not in our DNA. Um, but yeah, the winters are not too bad. If you're coming from a harsh place, it's going to be a breath of fresh air. Just be careful of that summertime. If you can make it through the summer, the rest of the year is going to be golden. And in my opinion, you're going to like living in Austin, Texas. So whether it is Austin, Texas specifically, whether it's Pflugerville, whether it's Colleen, whether it's Hutto, whether it's Georgetown, whether it's Cedar Park, whether it's the domain area, anything in between, what we pride ourselves in doing is finding the perfect place for you, making your move as smooth as possible to where all you've got to do is pack up those boxes and we take care of the rest based on what you tell us about yourself and your lifestyle. But the only way we can do that is by you reaching out to us. We love helping people just like you all the time. So whether you are nine days away, 90 days away, or whatever the timeline is, do not hesitate to give us a call, choose the text, send us an email any day of the week, any time of day. In addition to that, consider again, subscribing to this channel as we put out new content each and every week. Ring the little bell so that you're notified whenever that happens. Consider liking this video as well as it helps our channel grow and tells us that we're doing a good enough job providing some value for you. Lastly, if you have any friends, parents, children, anyone in your life who is moving to Austin, go ahead and share our content. Comment down below as well so we can get involved. And until the next one, you guys, we'll catch you later.